Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Between Lands Spotlight tutorial series. So today what we're going to be covering is we're going to be covering the fauna of the Between Lands. Basically all the different creatures that you can encounter um, in your time within the Between Lands. And I've actually got a bunch of spawn eggs here. Now these bottom three we're not going to be covering today because um, these are bosses. We're going to be covering them in their own separate um, section where we actually talk about the dungeons that they're in. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off with the passive creatures that you may encounter within the Between Lands. We'll start with the least dangerous stuff. Now all around me you're going to see geckos. These spawn in most, most biomes uh, within the Between Lands and I'm going to grab some weedwood bushes and just place these out because the way geckos work is they are scared of the player. You can see if I go into survival mode, they jump into the bushes real quick. And if I was to break this, you'll see that they run into additional bushes. There's one. Um, now these, all three of these that we're going to cover first are capturable with the net item. So if I was to sneak up on that one, you can see I right click it and I have a gecko. Uh, four out of six health and then I can place it back down. Um, geckos are used within herb lore a bit when it comes to gecko testing because you're going to use um, various different items to find out the aspects uh, by seeing kind of how the geckos react but we'll talk more about that a bit later but geckos you're going to be capturing a lot of those. Now there's also fireflies. Um, these we talked about briefly in the last episode along with dragonflies. These do emit light and um, you know, they'll kind of fly around. I actually had one as a pet back on SevTech. They just kind of flew around our Between Lands base. Um, but when name tagged, these will not despawn. But you do need to be careful because they can fly off. Um, once again, capturable with a net if you want to take them home. Um, and then lastly, for the net-based ones, we have the Dragonfly. Um, fireflies, by the way, are going to spawn in most biomes uh, within the Between Lands. The Dragonfly is going to spawn around water. Um, now the geckos and fireflies don't really have any drops. The dragonfly does. It drops dragonfly wings, which are used for arrows. Once again, capturable with a net and able to pull the drayton just like the firefly. Now next up, we have the mire snail. This is actually a very common um, creature to spot during your time in the Between Lands. Um, these will oftentimes, they'll spawn in a number of different biomes, but they will oftentimes be found in... Um, kind of your swamplands biomes, which are these biomes right down here. Um, just your very, very common type biomes, which you will oftentimes see these in around patchy islands and things like that as well. And one thing I do want to show you really quick regarding mire snails, if you want to farm these, if you want to breed them and keep them and all that fun stuff, what you can do is you can feed them sludge balls or you can feed them sap spit. Either one works. Um, sap spit is... A little bit more rare than sludge balls really um, but they can be bred with either one and they're gonna create these right here these are mire snail eggs now given a bit of time they will hatch into a baby mire snail it's actually a really really small mire snail it's really really cute and if you're in um, survival mode you can just right click to pick these up you can eat them as they are um, you can also cook them to make cook mire snail eggs which can then be turned into mire scrambles um, being one of the best foods in the Between Lands. But that's how breeding those works. You can kind of just keep them and domesticate them, kind of like cows or, you know, otherwise. Now, next up, we have the Harlequin Toad. And we talked about this one a bit in the last episode, but if you have dragonfly wings, you can tame this guy. And it takes a few usually, but then you can right-click and ride around on him. Um, these are fairly uncommon spawns, but you will see them from time to time, um, just kind of creeping about in the Between Lands. Various biomes, even underground sometimes you can spot these. So, And then next up we have, I really don't even need the spawn egg for these, but we have frogs. And you'll see these everywhere. These guys come in various different colors. Now that one right there is a little bit dangerous. You'll see the particles coming off of him. That's actually a poison frog. It's a more rare version. Um, but they will spawn from time to time, and if you get near them, they will apply poison. Still kind of a passive creature, but just a heads up um, on that. 
Now next up we have blind cavefish. We talked about these in the last episode. You'll find these underground at the bottom layers of the underground. These are small little fish that are passive, non-aggressive. They don't drop anything. They're kind of there more for um, immersion more than anything. Um, now there will be, of course, more fish added to this, probably a separate video uh, before too long because I know fishing is in the works and you can check out some images and stuff um, on that on the official Between Lands Discord. So if you look down below, I do have a link for that. Um, now, next up, we have Greeblings. Now, these guys are really cool. Um, in a way, they can somewhat be counted as hostile because you'll see them riding Chiromals um, in the more recent updates. They are the riders that ride the, the Chiromals. But you'll see these guys sitting around. Just the, the normal Greebling is a passive creature. And they sit around and they play music. I'm sure you can hear the music that they're playing right now. Um, and if you get up near them, you'll see that they vanish. So they're kind of hard to spot. Um, they're really cool, but uh, they do vanish usually before you can get up close to them. And actually, this is a good example. If we stealth up on them, you'll see we can get pretty close to them, but then they will um, inevitably they'll run off. So... Um, if we spawn, yeah, there's the other one. That's a little bit more of a rare one, but it has a pan flute. And you'll notice their music is different, but they'll play together and kind of make a, a song together, uh, which is pretty neat. They kind of just add additional ambience into the world um, as you're running about. Now, last up, we have... Uh, first up, Sporlings. These guys you'll see occasionally in various different biomes. And then there is the root sprites. And you'll notice that they're friends. These are like basically like little groups. And they'll kind of interact with each other. You can see this one runs over uh, to the little group there. And they'll kind of hang out. And upon killing them, the root sprites will drop root pods. And then the sporlings, if we get these guys, they will drop uh, these right here. These are spores. And they'll also drop white pear seeds. Um, though it's a little bit more of a rare drop and uh, pitcher plant traps as well uh, come from root sprites and I think a couple other like little odd and end uh, plant items now where you're going to find these um, we'll cover the structures a little bit more later on but let me teleport out here um, these right here are tree stumps and this is a great place to hunt for uh, sporlings. Now they will spawn in other places. Sometimes you'll just see them in the swamplands biomes, just kind of out and about. Um, but these tree stumps are great places. Usually they'll congregate atop these mushrooms that stick off the sides of these. And then the root sprites, where you're going to find those is on these right here. These are right over there. Oh, and here's a kind of a greebling flying a caramel rider. These are kind of like mean greeblings, the ones that we were looking at before are nice ones. Um, but then the root sprites are going to spawn on these. These are giant roots. Um, also, sporlings will spawn on the mushrooms here. Pretty much anytime you see the mushrooms, um, you're going to know that sporlings can spawn in that area. Um, but they will sometimes travel around. You'll see them in strange places and stuff on occasion. But the root sprites will spawn on these giant roots as well. Um, so if you're looking for those guys, you can find them that way. Um, the other option is the animator for both the sporlings and the root sprites. We'll talk more about the animator, though, in a later episode. Now, last up on our list of passive creatures, we have the lurkers. Uh, we talked about these a bit back. They drop lurker skin. Um, upon being killed. They are very tanky by comparison to most of the Twinlands mobs. Having a fair amount of health. Um, they spawn pretty much most places where there's water and they are the arch nemesis of anglerfish. But they will attack you when provoked. Um, but for the most part they are passive uh, passive creatures. So, um, And then let's go ahead and segue then into the angler which will be pretty much the only other aquatic creature outside of lurkers, blind cave fish, and if you count them, frogs and stuff like that. But the angler fish are these small fish right here. Very, very noticeable because they do emit light 
from the um, you know the little lantern there on their head. These guys are very very aggressive, even going so far as to leap out of the water when they spot you. As you can see, jumping out of the water because they want your flesh that badly. And they do drop meat and teeth. And you can see a number of sporlings down here. Um, and these roots should be capable of spawning root sprites as well. Root sprites tend to be a lot more rare though, in my experience, than sporlings are. And a whole lot harder to notice um, as well. Because they're small and they're the same color as the roots that they spawn on. So... Now next up, we have the Dark Druid. This guy doesn't actually spawn in the Between Lands, but he does spawn outside the Between Lands, of course, and is required for entering the Dimension. Um, primary forms of attack are just lifting you up and tossing you, basically going for fall damage, as well as dealing damage upon collision, like most mobs do. And they'll only spawn around the stone circles um, in the overworld. Now next up, we have the Chiromaw. Um, this is a creature that spawns literally everywhere in the Between Lands. Spawns in the sky, even underground. Um, you'll see them on occasion, like hanging from the, the ceiling like bats, you know. Um, and they will, of course, come after you and try to attack you until you are dead. Now next up, we're going to continue with the kind of Chiromaw focus. And we're going to move on to the Chiromaw Grebling Rider. Now this guy is very, very common sight in the Between Lands. And you'll notice pretty quick that they won't really attack you on sight like other Chiromals do. I mean, I can stand right next to this one. He's not going to do a single thing to me. Um, but as soon as I hop into a Drayton, yeah, you can see the regular Chiromal comes after me. Uh, but the Grebling Rider is not going to do anything. Um, if I attack him, he still does nothing. He's only going to attack you if you are in a Drayton. And if you want to see something really cool... Um, Let's go ahead, spawn one of these guys. If you kill one of these, you'll see that the Grebling comes out in a parachute. Um, a little bit hard to see from here. Let's go ahead and knock. There we go. Comes off in a volar kite and then vanishes into leaves whenever he hits something. And they kind of make a ah sound whenever their, their Chiromal is killed. So, And now there also is the Chiromal Matriarch. Um, we're not going to be talking about her this episode, though. Um, originally, I was thinking about it, but I think she'd be better suited to go alongside the other four bosses of the Between Lands and cover kind of separately. Even though she does not get a boss bar, she can still be thought of as a boss. Um, she's very, very stout, has special mechanics. Um, so we're going to handle her separately. We're going to talk more about her. Now next up, as far as just the general purpose mobs of the Between Lands, um, we have the Blood Snails, um, which these guys spawn most anywhere, um, oftentimes being from spawners as well as just natural spawns. Pretty much anywhere that you can find a Mire Snail, you're going to be able to find a Blood Snail. These guys are aggressive, and they do drop Crimson Snail Shells, which can be used for Herb Lore, as well as Snail Flesh, just like regular Mire Snails do. Um, their primary form of attack is going to be a ranged attack. Uh, if we give it a second. Yeah, there we go. Kind of a short range little um, shot that they do. As well as, of course, just regular collision damage. Uh, you can see the particles come off there. These guys can usually be killed in about one hit, two hits, something like that. Now next up we have following kind of... Uh, bugs more or less we have the leeches now these guys are also fairly weak only taking a hit or two but you can see they actually latch onto you and drink your blood um let's see three hits from the ancient grade sword for those um not a whole lot of health fairly easy to kill for the most part and then there are termites which basically are these big nasty things and they will chase you down and do very minimal damage. They're super common, low health creatures. They spawn, and termites are going to spawn from a variety of places. Um, for starters, they can spawn from pots of chance. There's also spawners that will have them in them. And also these right down here. This wood right here is rotted bark. And when you break this, there will oftentimes be termites inside of it. 
So as you can see here, um, and they will spawn from inside of those. Not really any kind of drops or anything to be on the lookout for when it comes to termites. Uh, they're basically there as kind of like a nuisance creature. Now next up we have the white. And this guy is kind of interesting because you'll see that he walks around almost sad. And will kind of cry and make these like sound effects like he's weeping. Uh, and at first he's not going to be aggressive to you. Because as long as he's looking down and doesn't notice you, he's just going to kind of walk around and sob. Um, but upon noticing you, and actually let me get a Swamp Hag out as well. And of course Swamp Hags are kind of like your general mob of the Between Lands. Very iconic mob for the Between Lands. Um, pretty much like your zombie. Their only form of attack is collision based damage. The White is a little bit more unique because he's going to run at you kind of like an Enderman. But whenever he gets the inkling to do so, it's not necessarily tied to being low health or anything like that. But he can possess other creatures. So here he comes. He's angry, trying to do that collision damage. And after a minute, we may see him... Here we go. You can see that he just jumped into that swamp pack and has now possessed it. And is firing off these little bursts everywhere. These are magic damage bursts. Um, let me go ahead and go into creative mode. Because um, I'm trying to show this off. But he's going to fire off these bursts of... Uh, magic damage and they do as you notice they do do a fair amount of damage considering I have ancient armor which reduces magic damage um, half magic redam magic damage reduction while wearing the set still did a fair amount of damage to me so of course it's not enchanted or anything like that um, but the possession is going to last for a while and basically whenever you attack you're gonna be able to do damage to the white um, even though it's possessed, you can see it just died. And the Swamp Hag is still alive. And now it's dead, of course. But um, So you have to be careful. That's actually the White's most dangerous form. If it has other creatures nearby that it can possess, be aware that it can and very likely will possess another creature, basically boosting the amount of damage that it outputs by a fair amount. Not to mention being able to do range damage which is a big a big part of that that makes it so dangerous. Now whites are going to drop whites hearts uh, which are fairly useful. Uh, you can see we can make tar based hearts, Gertz donuts, animator, um, and then we can also repair life crystals. This is the main place where you're going to be using a lot of whites hearts is in repairing your life crystals. Definitely one of the big mobs that you want to farm a lot of. And whites are capable of spawning most anywhere in the between lands. They do have their very own spawners, which spawn in both dungeons and ruins. They are a big part of the primordial malevolence fight, spawning constantly within that fight, um, which does tend to net you a lot of whites' hearts. Um, and then, of course, hags will drop your slimy bones. Now, next up, we have silt crabs. These guys, they may look like they would be passive uh, at first glance, but they do kind of come after you and they try to pinch you. Not dealing a whole lot of damage. Um, that's really their only form of attack is collision based damage. Uh, but you will notice that they are decently fast. Uh, so something to be aware of. Um, these guys are mainly just going to spawn on islands. Um, both forms of islands can spawn uh, silk crabs. And they will drop silk crab claws which can be used to make crab meat sticks. Um, now next up we have kind of a miscellaneous collection of mobs. First up we have the boulder sprite. We talked about this guy when we were talking about the underground. These guys are pretty dangerous. Um, their primary form of attack is going to be rolling at you. Um, but the boulder sprite is actually a fairly tanky creature. And if I run away from it, yeah there you go. You'll notice that that's its primary form of attack. It's trying to do collision damage but it's extremely slow and easy to back away from. Um, honestly fairly easy to dodge their rolling attack but the problem is when they get you when you don't see them because they do blend in with their environment pretty well and they'll just come rolling out of nowhere and hit you um, and their roll does do a fair amount of damage um, now they're going to drop a variety of ores stone types stalactites angry pebbles stuff like that um, upon being killed now next up um, I'm gonna go ahead and just mention tar minions we're gonna talk more about these when we talk about the animator these guys don't actually spawn naturally, uh, though there is a spawn egg for them. 
Um, these guys are only created through the animator and are basically pets for the player. Um, if you do attack one from a spawn egg though, I have found that they will attack you back. Um, but they can be used for battle and such player. And upon death they will drop an inanimate tar minion which can then be reanimated into a tar minion. So you can get them back that way. Um, and then we get to talk about the tar beasts. These guys will only spawn around sludge or tar pools. It is really the only place that they spawn. These are probably the strongest mob within the Between Lands, being very, very dangerous. Um, let's go ahead. Ugh, I may regret this. But basically, with the tar beasts, they are very tanky, and they do a lot of AoE-type damage. Having a, a couple special attacks, that right there where they kind of... Uh, I got slowness being near them. Um, but kind of where they do that attack. Very, very dangerous. And of course, being inside of the... Oh, this is their big attack. Oh, it's dead. Okay. Um, being around the tar pools makes them excessively dangerous. Especially when you consider that the tar pools are most often found in sludge plains. Though you will find them underground as well as in swampland biomes but a tar base most dangerous attack is where it sucks everything in and does this massive explosion um, i'm gonna see if i can get this one to do it real quick that's its normal attack and it also tries to do collision damage tries to chase you down but it does have that small aoe effect that it kind of fires off around it it does a little bit of damage here we go this is its big attack this is what you don't want there we go. Instant death, pretty much. It's not quite instant death, but it is massive damage. I should have put up all my stuff before I demonstrated that. That's the big attack that you want to be aware of and be mindful of and try to avoid because it will rip you to shreds. So just be aware of that. Um, for the most part, tar base aren't too bad. Um, I do highly suggest if you're fighting them to fight them at a range because you can avoid pretty much all their attacks if you use arrows. The vacuum effect only goes out about 20 or 25 blocks roughly. Um, so as long as you can stay out of its range, you know, so far out, you should be A-OK. -okay. But um, I do highly suggest that you avoid that attack because it deals massive damage. It is survivable, but it takes some really good armor um, to survive it so um, even out of mod level armor to be honest now next up we have shallow breaths which we've talked a little bit about before these will pretty much only spawn um, really about the only place you're gonna see them is around the marsh biomes which are these right here and you're gonna see them fairly commonly in those areas and these are they actually don't have a ton of HP um, and they don't do a ton of damage or anything like that, but they will slowly come after you. Um, if we give this one a second to realize that I'm here, it's going to come after me. And basically what it does is it applies poison damage. Um, which can be deadly when you're trying to navigate through the marshes early on. Um, because that poison will sap you. And it can finish you off. If it does collision damage, it can finish you off. Um, but it also softens you up for things like blood leeches, whites, chiromals, things like that. Uh, that can swoop in and get that final hit in on you. So just be aware of those. Um, not too bad, but they can be dangerous when you're first starting out. Now next up we have the Pyrad, which is this guy right here. And basically what they do is they attack with magic. Um, they shoot flames, and that's their primary source of attack. Now, and they are going to be kind of tough to kill without a bow because you're going to rely on them coming in um, to attack. They'll usually fly in. Like if you notice here, a lot of times they'll fly in closer um, to do their attacks. So. Very much suggested that you have a ranged weapon when trying to deal with these guys. Now for the most part, they're not a super common enemy. Um, yeah, they're just like setting everything on fire. But you will notice that they are extremely tanky. They can take quite a few hits. There we go. And when they die, they basically shut down and then turn into uh, leaves and, and all that. And they're going to drop tangled roots and they're going to drop some sulfur 
as well. But they do have a fair amount of HP. Um, the only places you're, that you're really going to encounter them is from spawners in the White Fortress and in the, uh, the Ruin Tower. As well as occasionally you'll run across them outside of giant weedwood trees where they're not going to necessarily like come after you or even really be active until you start cutting into a giant weedwood tree and then they'll kind of come active and try to protect the tree from you. Um, so just a heads up there. Now next up, we are going to talk about some of the stuff that spawns in the tar fields. Now outside in the tar fields, there's three main creatures that you're going to encounter, not including the tar base and the termites. You're gonna encounter sludges and small sludges. That's a normal sludge that leaves behind the brown stuff. Of course, the small sludges, we've talked briefly about those in a prior episode. They're a little bit smaller and they're not going to leave behind the brown stuff. Both of these, the main thing that you would be killing them for is sludge balls. Um, but like I said, you're better off just capturing them and farming it um, with kind of a controlled area. Now also, whenever you are navigating through the sludge plains, you're going to encounter a peat mummy. These guys are terrifying, especially if you're in the middle of this biome and you don't have um, rubber boots on. These guys can pretty much end your day extremely quickly. This is a peat mummy. <laughs> and these guys are terrifying. Um, for example, if I... Let me get over near some water so I can let you see it kind of coming to life and everything. But he moves extremely slow by default but let's let him roar real quick and you'll notice he doesn't have really any ranged attacks he basically just crawls after you go ahead they do do a lot of damage though so here we go he's gonna roar and now if he could stay in on the ground here yeah, he's going to come booking it over to us. And I'm stuck on mud at the moment. There we go. <laughs> but that's their main thing that they do. And there we go. We got Fearless Spider. Um, that's their main thing that they do. And they also drop a lot of Shimmer Stone. Now, Shimmer Stone's important. Um, it is used to spawn a boss. But more importantly, it can be used to attract mummies oh this one's going for this shimmer stones over here um, basically what you can do is you can take shimmer stone and you can just throw it he's gonna pick it up water is like your best friend when it comes to these guys yeah he's gonna run over to that shimmer stone and he's gonna start trying to pick it up and he's gonna ignore me until he picks up that shimmer stone which takes him a few seconds um, so a great way to farm these guys is with shimmer stone and I suggest you wait until they do their dash um, before you use the Shimmer Stone because it can basically stop them in the tracks and allow you to beat on them um, when normally they would be booking it to you. Um, and like I said, they'll just crawl up out of the ground randomly um, in this biome. And I think with that, I'm going to end out this episode here. Um, there are still some mobs that we have not covered, but those only apply, um, at least at the moment, at the time of recording this, they only apply to the sludge dungeon as well as one additional tameable mob that comes from the sludge dungeon so we'll cover those mobs when we cover the sludge dungeon this is just for like kind of the general mobs of the between lands that spawn here so anyways um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out and I hope to see you guys next time so until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.